One of the most frequently asked questions is, what size torch do I need? That depends upon what you're going to do. But if you want to do heavy work like gas welding one quarter and three eighths inch steel, then you're going to want a large torch. Most people that are asking me want to do the type of work that I do. And so I suggest a small torch. And small is a relative term. For example, this is a large torch. And I use this if I want to heat a piece of steel up, you know, let's say quarter inch, to form it or bend it. Or I want to gas weld or braze some 3 8 inch steel. Then I'll use this torch here. Now this is a Victor torch with a short barrel and it's got a number three tip on it. Really puts out a tremendous amount of heat. This is a torch that I use for most of the work that I do. Now this is a Victor Performer. Let's say it's a medium weight torch. This will take a number of different tips. So you could put, like this has got an OT tip on it. You could put a larger, a 1, or a 2, or a 3. And you could even, you can probably do the 3 8 inch steel with a number 3 tip. It just takes longer than doing it with the large torch like this. But for most of the work that I do, this performer is just a great torch. Now this is one of the newer models and it has the flashback arrestors built right into the torch. Which is the only thing that I don't like about this torch because I tend to hold the torch here as opposed to up here. So it's just a little cumbersome to have those flashback arrestors built in right here. Although they are a good safety measure. Now, this is an older performer torch. You see it, it doesn't have the flashback arrestors. For me it's a little more comfortable. The performer is what I've been using for probably 30 years. Just the perfect size for the work that I do. Now here's another performer. This is just the handle. There's just a variety of tips that you can buy for these. And this is called a rosebud. I use the rosebud if I'm going to be heating copper up to a it. All these holes in here, it puts out a broad span of heat so that I can anneal very quickly. So the, this performer right here, which is basically the same as these, it will take you know a large tip like this rosebud. Victor, the other names that are most popular are Harris and Smith. All very good names in oxygen acetylene welding and brazing torches and tips. Now here's another torch that I like. And you can see that it's a little bit smaller than the Victor Performer. One of the things I do like about this torch is that the knobs are up here. This particular torch is a Uniweld. I believe this is a, a number 71. And most of the Uniweld torches have the knobs down here but in this case they're up here, which makes it very handy. This is a lighter weight torch, and the tips are somewhat smaller. So, you know, just very, especially for very small detail work, I really like using this. Also, the the Uniweld, they have some very interesting tips. Now, I've never used these, but if you were doing, you know, heavy copper tubing, it looks to me like these would be very good to heat both sides of the tubing. But as I say, I've never used these, but Uniweld does have some very interesting configurations in their tips that I don't see in other torches. And this is the Henrob 2000. 
completely different type of torch than the standard oxygen acetylene torches like these two. It has some advantages. It uses far less acetylene and the heat is much more pinpointed. Now, here's a, you can get a whole set of different tips. And one of the main claims to fame for this torch is cutting steel. Now actually I don't cut much steel with this. I use it for brazing and for gas welding. It just does an excellent job. But it's a little more difficult to get used to. But all of the torches, one of the big things is taking some time to practice. Getting, you know, getting in tune with the torch. Setting your regulators. Figuring out which tip you need for a particular type of work. Now, in the beginning, bracing and welding is you know, kind of difficult. But once you get onto it, you'll find out how easy it really is. But it does take that beginning learning curve, no matter what torch you have. So be sure and get a torch that is right for the work that you're going to be doing, and then spend some time learning to use it. Once I did the choosing an oxygen settling torch video, I started thinking about this a little bit more and I went back to the beginning of my first torch. Now, my first torch was a Craftsman. I bought it at Sears. At that point I was very naive and it was the only place that I knew that you could buy a torch. Now where I thought I was going to get the tanks, I have no idea. But I bought this Craftsman and it was way too big for the work that I wanted to do. But I did some pretty nice work with it even so. It wasn't until 1973 that I had changed locations and I ran into this welding shop. And all of these people here had been welders. And they fixed me up with the Victor Performer. It was a very easy decision for me because it was the only torch they sold in that size range. So. I appreciate what you're going through when you're looking at all of these torches on the internet and they're all saying what great things that they'll do. And they probably will do most of what they say they'll do. But you have all of these choices where for me it was very simple. I only had one torch to look at, the Victor Performer. And I've used that since 1973. As a matter of fact, not that one, but I've probably gone through six or seven oxygen acetylene outfits in this, what, 35 years. Because they do wear out when you use them as much as I do. So, what we've got here is we've got Victor, we've got Harris, and we've got Smith. All very reputable names. we got Neko. And that looks like a neat torch. I've never seen one or I've never, you know, had one. And only you know, just recently that I found out about them, but it looks like a very neat torch. And I saw some work that somebody was doing with it, and obviously they had spent the time to learn how to use that torch to do what they wanted to do. Now, you looked at the Henrob 2000, and I don't cut with it. It's something I do plan to do, but I don't cut with that torch. I don't cut steel. But I have spent a lot of time brazing and welding with it. And it is an excellent torch, but it did take me time to get the proficiency that I now have. And one thing I want to clear up is that in that first video I talked about, I said that this is a large torch. What I meant was that this is a large torch for my shop. Now one summer I did structural steel. And we had torches that you actually had to almost hold in two hands. They were so big. So this is small compared to those. But for my shop, this is a large torch. So let's get into this a little bit more. For example, this is the Victor Performer outfit. It includes the torch, the cutting head, regulators, hose, and one welding brazing tip. It also includes a booklet. 
which I would suggest reading. It's got some very good tips in it. And whatever booklet that comes with your torch, I'm sure you'll find some valuable information there. So be sure and read it. If you take a look at my website, there's a section there titled Gallery. The pieces in that gallery, almost all of them were done with the Victor Performer. So it will give you some idea of the range that you can work with with the Victor Performer. And the same is probably true of a Smith or a Harris in this size range. Here's a couple of sets of oxygen acetylene regulators. Regulators regulate the flow of oxygen and acetylene from the tanks to the torch. Now this set here looks a little bit more impressive than this set. But both of these sets came in oxygen acetylene outfits. The outfits include the regulator, the torch, the hose, the cutting head, and a welding tip. They were part of the outfit. And I don't find any difference between the smaller set like this compared to the larger set. Both work exactly the same. Attaching the oxygen regulator to the oxygen tank is very straightforward. Slip it on, tighten it down. The acetylene regulator is a little bit different. You'll see notches right on this nut right here. That indicates that it's left-handed threads. So when you put this into your acetylene tank, you go counterclockwise to tighten it. Also, different welding companies have different types of acetylene tanks. So you need to make sure that this is going to fit into their tank. Now, if it doesn't fit in there, there are adapters. The welding company will have an adapter that will allow this to fit into their type of tank. So if I was going to go in and get some oxygen acetylene for the first time, I would take my acetylene regulator to make sure that it fit on their acetylene tanks. When looking at torches on the internet, I often see this word like. It'll say Harris like, Victor like, Smith like. I really don't know what that word means. But if I was buying a torch today, I would want to find out. If you take a look at an authorized dealer that is selling Victor or Smith or Harris, none of them say, you know, Harris like. They say, you know, like Harris, Victor. Smith. So I would want to know exactly what does that word indicate like. For my work, the hose that comes from the regulator to the torch, that's very important. This hose is very flexible. And why that's important is that if I'm doing very detailed work, very fine work, and I'm turning my torch a lot like this, it's much easier to do it with a very flexible hose than it is with a you know, stiffer hose like this. Now, if you're using a large torch, you know, this would work fine because you'll be working on heavier metals and you don't need that much flexibility. So the stiffer hose will work just fine on a large torch, but I prefer this very flexible hose for doing small detailed work. 